around the big suitcase. It's okay, Mom. Ben, get a rope. Put it around the suitcase. It's okay, Mom. <laughs> It'll break open in the middle of the street. It's okay, Mom. Are you packed everything? Just about. What'd you leave? I left some pictures, some books, and I'll pick them up when I come back. Are you coming back? I thought this was uh, for good, huh? I don't want to argue, Mom. Uh, Let me help you, Mom. Did you hear? I can do it. I can do it. You hear? He's, uh, Mr. Greenwich Village is going to honor us with his uh, presence. He's, he's going to come back. <laughs> when? When are you going to come back? When? when? I'm not arguing with you, Mom. Don't argue. You're trying to make me feel guilty about going. Mom, I am going. I have to go. I have to live my own life. I am 22 years old. Mom, you're going to give yourself a heart attack. Jesus Christ, will you stop it? Nothing you do is going to stop me from going. You are not going to make me feel guilty. Mrs. Tupperman. Where are you going with all that luggage? Greenwich Village. You're moving? Yeah. What's in Greenwich Village? Fame and fortune. I'll see you later, Mrs. Tupperman. Be careful, Larry. My guilty. Maybe I should get a diaphragm. That would be nice. For you. <laughs> Maybe I should get a diaphragm. I wonder if my mother's fits me. You've talked to your mother about things like that? No. She doesn't even know I know she has a diaphragm. How do you know? I looked in a drawer one night. You love me? I told you I might get a diaphragm. Where will you get it? I'll go to a doctor. What doctor? I'll find a doctor. It's easy. 
Where will you keep it? My drawer. Doesn't your mother go through your stuff? I'll bury it in the backyard. What is this? You're a very funny lady. We should do a comedy act together. We just did a comedy act together. Huh. Oh, I was just funny, huh? I wasn't good. I wasn't great. Was I funny or was I great? Stop it, Larry. Was I funny or was I great? You were fine. I love that. You were fine. Larry Lipinski, my dear, is not fine. Larry Lipinski is King Kong. <laughs> Larry Lipinski is either a sexual brute or a tender poet. Fine, he is not. You were fine. Call your mother and tell her you're staying overnight with a girlfriend. I don't have a girlfriend. What are we going to do? When? What do you mean? With our lives. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm going to get a diaphragm. I think about suicide once or twice a day. That's normal. I really do. So? Do you? Not lately. Why do I do it? Suicide makes you feel talented. You feel like a Dostoevsky and hero. Do you the one about Dostoevsky and Tolstoy? Dostoevsky meets Tolstoy in the streets of Moscow. They both have to take a pee, so they take a pee right in the street. So Dostoevsky says to Tolstoy, why... Why are you peeing on my pants like I heard? Oh, come on, Larry, get dressed. Do you want a beer? No, I gotta go Oh, home. come on, one beer. But they say, come, Petrushka, we shall dance. We shall dance in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> You're crazy. No, look, come on, Larry, I gotta wash my hair and I got a lot of things to do. Come on. Glass of beer will do you good. Would you please put your pants on? Hi. How are you? Good. Who's that? It's Nick Kessler. It's a crazy guy. Saved up all his money to go to Mexico. Wanted to see the ruins, you know, get into the primitive thing. So he quit his job and everything, and he took off for Mexico City on Monday. Two beers, you raped? Yesterday, Monday? Right. So he got off the plane, and he ate a taco, and he got a terrible case of the shits. <laughs> so he took the next plane back. Spent two and a half hours in Mexico. He says it stinks. <laughs> I wonder if they sell diaphragms in Mexico. They sell crosses in Mexico. Hey, Barney. How's the actor? How you doing, Barney? This is Sarah, my girlfriend. Did I meet you with the new school? I don't think so. Did you ever take a course in modern art with Ben Probst? No. That's cool. The only body uh, needs an abortion. Not lately. Oh, I know someone clean and dependable. You know, a lot of butchers running around. Well, I'll be sure to let you know when I get knocked up. Hey, no offense. I just get a cut if I steer business. I'll see you later, Barney. Oh. Excuse me. Hey, you make a great model. Let me know if you want to come sip to me. <laughs> you ever done any modeling? My name's Barney. <laughs> nope. You remind me of a Rubens. Can he paint? I doubt it. <laughs> oh, I want you to meet Bernstein. Bernstein? Yeah, his first name is Bernstein. His real name is Bernstein Chandler. His mother's a cleaning lady. She worked 30 years for a Jewish family named Bernstein. She named him after them. Hi. Hello, Larry, darling. And you must be Sarah. How did you know? My dear, I am a friend of Connie's, and you are a ravishing Semitic beauty. Well, so are you, kiddo. <laughs> Larry, Sarah, I'd like you to meet Swin. How do you do? Well, what on the heart is that? I make a party. <laughs> He's Norwegian, doesn't speak a word of English. Isn't he beautiful? I met him on the subway this morning, and I think I'm in love, but I don't know how to tell him. Does anyone know how to say I love you in Norwegian? Get a poem for that one. You're only 25 cents. I'm broke, Jake. You're only 25 cents. All right, wait a second. In the winter, I'm a Buddhist. In the summer, I'm a notice. They're only 25 cents. Anybody else want one? <laughs> Marvelous. Ah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Read it to your loved ones. Here you go, loved ones. What on the heart of this? What do you want to be when you grow up? I forget. I want to be a star. 
I want to go to Mexico. I never wanted to be a cop or a fireman or a pilot. For a brief time there, I wanted to be a war hero. But I always wanted to be a star. I used to lay in the bathtub dreaming of me as Robin Hood or Louis Pasteur. <laughs> I'm bored. There's nothing happening in New York. What, are you depressed? Yeah. I wish I was. No, no, I, I, just, I just feel weird. Let's get married. Maybe I should go to an analyst. You're better off in Mexico. Maybe I should go to a Mexican analyst. So tell me, my dear, what seems to be the trouble? I want to be Miss Subway. You're a very sick girl. Put a rubber on. I didn't bring anything. Schmuck. This proves I don't love you for just your body. I'll call you tomorrow. What if your father wakes up? My father sleeps like a dead man. My mother's probably watching us right this second. <laughs> I'll pull out before I come, okay? I love you, Sarah. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them to die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and a thousand natural shots that slice his air to Hey, Blanche. How you doing, Blanche, baby? I want to tell you about the Napoleonic Code, Blanche. I hold in my hand a copy of the Napoleonic Code. Understand me, Blanche? 
You got some chewing gum on your tit. I thought it was diamonds. I thought it was a diamond tiara. I'll see you later, Blanche. Stella. Where are you, Stella, baby? Stella? Stella, baby, where are you, Stella? Stella! Where are you, Stella? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen of the Academy. This Oscar gives me great pleasure. But I don't think that this award goes just to Larry Lipinski. No, no. There are a lot of other people involved in this. First of all, I, I would like to thank my director, Ilya Kazan. It was, it was Gadge who first discovered me in the 42nd Street Library. Without Gadge, there would be no Larry Lipinski. I would also like to thank the author of this film, that great Jewish writer, Eugene O'Neill. Gene, thank you. Boy, this is really something. But, ladies and gentlemen of the Academy, I don't think that this evening would be complete if I didn't thank the little lady who has stood behind me all these years. As a matter of fact, she's standing behind me now. Mom, say a few words. When my darling, when my darling, adorable, loving son, first told my husband and myself that he wanted to be an actor, I scoffed. Oh, boy. Did I scoff, but tonight I realized that I scoffed wrongly. You don't scoff at an Academy Award winner. My son's performance as Sheriff Luke Marshall in Last Train to Budapest will go down as one of the great performances in motion picture history. But, ladies and gentlemen of the Academy, tell me one thing. Why does my son complain when I bring him a chicken to his big deal Greenwich Village apartment? Why, why, why? I'll tell you why, Mom. Because the boy's an ingrate. He doesn't understand the Napoleonic Code. Hey, you. Yeah, you, come here. You're waking up the whole neighborhood. I'm sorry, officer. I... Are you crazy? I was just doing some imitations. They stink. I know. What was that supposed to be over there, Marlon Brando? Yeah. Yeah? It was. Well, it sounded like Edward G. Robinson. I know. Well, my Marlon Brando sounds just like my Edward G. Robinson. Well, let me hear Edward G. Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys. I'm little Caesar, see? Yeah, yeah. Are you in show business, kid? Yeah, well, I want to be an actor, well, yeah. Take my advice. Get into another line. Thank you, officer for your advice. But most of all, I would like to thank an unknown police officer who was the first person to give me encouragement. Job. Are you the boy from the agency? Yes, the Canal Street Employment Agency. Yeah, Canal Street. Get my husband. Herb, the boy from the agency is here. You got experience? Yes, sir. I worked as a waiter in the Catskills. Did you ever work at Connor? Yes. Yes, I did. Where? Uh, my uncle had a place in Brooklyn. I worked the counter. Where in Brooklyn? Brownsville. Did you ever work a juicer? Uh, I don't know. What's a juicer? This is a juicer. I never worked a juicer, no, sir. Are you a college boy? Yeah, I graduated from Brooklyn College. What's a college graduate looking for a job in a restaurant for? I need the money. Hey, mister, look. If I'm not right, tell me. I need a boy from 11 to 3. We're mostly a lunch trade. 11 to 3 is fine with me. Mm. Good morning, Hub. Good morning, Mr. Alkins. How do you feel? I had a bad night. The head or the stomach? In here, all night, like a hammer.
You ate some crap yesterday, right or wrong? Well, uh... Right or wrong, please! I had a corned beef sandwich for lunch. <laughs> you hear that? He ate a poison sandwich for lunch, and he wonders if he's in pain. <laughs> I'll fix you a cabbage and a carrot juice. That'll take care of today. But do me a favor. If you go on poison tonight, don't come back. I'm not a magician. Helen. What? Get me an apron. Show them how to work the juicer. What's your name? Larry. First and last, please. Lipinski, Larry Lipinski. You got the job, Larry Lipinski, but you never worked a counter in Brooklyn, right or wrong. Right. So what are you standing around? Let's get to work. Okay. What's this? Spinach. And what's this? It's a carrot. Good thinking. Now, make me a carrot and spinach juice right away. Right up. Watch the hand. The accidents I need you. Get in there. Here. He was right in the middle of rehearsing this TV show when they fired him. Is Bastards. He, is he actually a communist? <laughs> He's a very good actor, that's all I know. They're really afraid of McCarthy. He's a paranoid schizophrenic. That's why they're afraid of him. <laughs> hey, Connie, what's happening? Follow us, my dears. Nita Cunningham just called, says she's going to kill herself. Well, when did she call? About a half an hour ago. Well, why did you wait a half an hour? She commits suicide once a week. She usually calls back. Yeah, yeah, she didn't call back. Hey, what's happening? Anita Cunningham is committing suicide. Can I watch? Listen, I'm not going in there. She is gas. Oh, Where speaking she of live? gas, Connie, hey. I think you left the water boiling. Stop. To the left. You... Oh. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Anita, we're here. You smell like cat piss already. <laughs> What floor does she live on? Fifth floor, darling. What the hell would it be? Five last. Anita. Anita. Anita, it's Connie. Anita, open up in the name of the law. Anita, it's Connie. Open up. I'm Robert Fulmer. Anita. Anita. Larry Lipinski. Meow. This is Sarah Roth. Meow. Anita, it's Connie. Open Connie up. Connie says you're an actor. Come on, I'm open studying. the door, Anita. I'm writing a play. Anita. Let's have a chat. Great. Anita. Be my guest. I think it's serious. Anita! Anita! Where are you? Stop playing games, Anita. Anita, you crazy maniac. Are you alive or dead? Is this gas or cat piss? It's pleasant, isn't it? Anita! Anita! She's in the bathroom. Anita! Anita, open up. It's Connie. Anita, Anita open the door. Anita, this is Robert. Open the door. I'll drown your cats. I don't think it's very deep. Get a towel. I think we should get her to a doctor. Shame on you. <laughs> Mrs. Gillette. That's the same blade she used last month. It's superficial. Oh, very so superficial. I don't want to live. Don't Do you have any iodine? Live. I don't want to live. I don't want to live. Yes, my dear, but where is the iodine? Over the sink. Don't want to live. Don't. Rosenbergs. 
are executed, I think there'll be a lot of craziness. Well, I don't in this think country. so. I doubt How it. How can you say that? There'll be outrage on the part of the liberals. You know, some passionate demonstrations. Famous people will rant and rave, but nothing will happen. I don't say that the government will be overthrown. I just think something will happen. If two people will die, that's what will happen. It's a terrible thing. Terrible? Ter that's a terribly easy word. Well, what word would you use? I don't know. I mean, it's difficult to find precise words in the English language. I'm sure you can find one somewhere. I don't know if I can. A language is tricky. Do you remember if I left the water boiling in my place? Uh, would tragic be a better word? You to water boil. No, tragic would not be a better word. The Rosenbergs are pathetic figures. They're not tragic. Well, what's happening to them is tragic. Yeah, but they're not tragic figures. I think you're full of shit. That may well be, but tragic and terrible are still the wrong words. Is full of shit the right word? <laughs> That's a little more like what I was looking for you. Brava. <laughs> <laughs> you all think I'm crazy, don't you? I think I'm just trying to get attention, don't you? You're wrong. I hate my life. Nothing feels good. I feel sad when I get up in the morning. I feel sad when I go to sleep. I really don't want to live. And I really don't want to die. I'm afraid of dying. Afraid of living, afraid of dying. Men don't want me, not the men I want. How do you expect to keep a man in that filthy apartment? Cease. Cease. These days, I'm really gonna do it. I won't call, I promise. Hey, Bubba, come on, let's go to a movie. Mm -hmm. Excellent notion. Oh, there's a beautiful ring you're wearing. Well, thank you, my dear. They were given to me by my father, who's an African prince. Tell me, how does your father, who is an African prince, get along with your mother, who is a cleaning woman? Mm. Oh, royally, my dear. I royally. think Zapata's playing at the Waverly. I saw it. I think it's a terribly easy film. Oh, I think it's terribly Jewish. Did you I see Limelight? Oh, shit. I think it's Charlie Chaplin. Chaplin. Yeah. yeah. I'm Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> I think I left my water boy. <laughs> You call this an apartment? <laughs> I don't call this an apartment. An apartment has furniture. This is not furniture, Mom. What do you mean, Mom? I've got a record player. I've got a lovely sling chair. I have a fabulous print by Bruegel. That is not funny, my darling son. <laughs> not funny at all, Ben. Go down and get some cream soda. I saw a place in the corner. Mom, I don't need any cream soda, Pop. You stay right where you are. Well, I need some cream soda. Ben, do you hear me? Mom, look, let Pop take a load off his feet, huh? I'll get the soda. Cream? Can you remember that? Sure, Ma. Cream. Hi, Mom. Hi, Pop. Come on in. an apartment? I don't call this an apartment. An apartment's got shelving and curtains, uh, furniture. This is not furniture. What do you mean, Mom? I've got a record player. I have a lovely sling chair. I have a fabulous print by Bruegels. Got a toilet? I'm dying. Right this way? Uh -huh. Look, I, I'm not with the, the humor and the so-called sarcasm. Oh, it's like the North Pole in here. Does the icebox work? I got some perishables. Of course it works. 
How do you like the paint job, huh? Not bad for an actor. That could use an ammo. How much is the rent? 25 a month. How's the job? It's okay. I think it would be smart if you got your teacher's license. It's good to have something to fall back on. I don't want to be a teacher. During the Depression, I made $13 a week when I was lucky. Have you got uh, any cockroaches? Only when I turn the lights on in the middle of the night. Oh, Mr. Wise Guy. Uh, let me get rid of this stuff. Here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I got you a holly and a rye bread and a pumpernickel. Your toilet's broken. I can't eat three loaves of bread. Uh, here, put the cream cheese away before it melts. Where's the locks? Where's the locks? That bastard, he forgot to give us the locks. Oh, I put the locks away. So why couldn't you just tell me? Uh, that's why I got the brownies. Uh, from Ratner's. You love brownies. You love them. And um, we got some tooth powder. Uh, oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, a chicken. Mom. And, and, and here's some underwear that you forgot. Oh, great, great. Maybe I can uh, put the cream cheese on the underwear and eat it. That's not funny. It's not funny no, at all. Mom. You left your dirty underwear at home. What do you want I, I appreciate do everything you're doing for me, but you're stalking me with enough food for 10 years. Don't scream at me. Look, how the hell am I going to cook a chicken? You'll cook a chicken in a pot. That's how you'll cook a chicken. Now listen. Listen to that voice. Listen! Wonderful. Uh, watch. Watch when he hits this high note. Now, now. I don't care what happens. Next year, I'm going to the Met, and I'm going to see him. He's really great. Well, I guess it's time to go, huh? Uh, listen, next week, I'll bring you a couple of curtains. Huh? We'll see you. Okay. That'll probably be good. Uh, what do you mean, probably? Oh, I can't predict the future. What if something comes up next time? What could come up? Uh, uh, what time are you going to call me? I don't know. Uh, you'll call me tomorrow night. That's what I said. I'll call you tomorrow night. Let's go, uh, Fred. Uh, and I get it from both sides. Go? Where should I go? Back to my dungeon in Brooklyn. Oh, for Christ's sake, will you stop it? Uh, let's get out of here. We're not wanted. We're not wanted here. Let's go. Come on. You're right. Just stay in the subway. We should never come here. I didn't say we shouldn't come here. Well, somebody said it! I'll call you tomorrow. What time? Four o'clock. Somewhere there must be happy boys and girls who can can teach us the way to live. Somewhere there must be a city where, where poverty is no crime, where music's no shame, where there's no war in the streets, where a man is glad to be himself, to live and, and make his woman herself. Give up fighting. But where do we go? Tonight, Joe, we ride in your car. We speed through the night. Across the park, over the Tribor Bridge. Right. That's it. We ride. Clear my head. We drive through the night. When you mow down the night with your headlights, nobody gets you. You're on top of the world, then. Nobody laughs. That's it. Speed. We're off the earth, unconnected. That's what speed's for. You don't have to think. It's an easy way to live. Lorna. Darling. We'll burn up the night. 
Lights, please. Involved for one second. Well, since you started, go ahead. There's, there's nothing else to say. <laughs> I was lousy. It just wasn't real for me. I was pushing. No, I don't think you were pushing. Larry, Larry, let her finish. I'm finished. I'm early finished. Ah, that's silly. I was so tense. I was so nervous. Um, it, just, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. Now, see, it's beginning to happen for you a little bit now. You know why? Because you feel you were bad. You feel you failed. And you punished yourself. You poked your thumbnail. You poked your fingers into the palm of your hand. Had to do specific things. Some very good things happened because you touched him. You tried to do concrete things to him with your hands. Then I would be appalled. I would say, she put her hands in her pockets. Kills you. I just felt the dialogue was so, you know, stilted that to do that well, was darling, to make it even more stilted. No, 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 no. When you do things, then the dialogue recedes into its proper place, and you won't even hear that it's stilted. It isn't stilted. It's very beautiful. Can I say one thing? Yeah. Well, I don't understand how you can do the scene if um, you don't understand the situation. No, no, no. See, you don't, you don't work that way. You don't, number one, understand and take in the whole emotional thing that you think the scene should have, and then do it. Don't make deals like, I will only attack this scene if I understand the full emotional basis of it. No, it won't work, because you're making deals with yourself, you see. You're giving yourself impossible goals. Do the small, real things, concrete, specific. Hands, fingers, hurt yourself with your own fingernail. Bleed for your art a little. Wouldn't hurt. You know? <laughs> OK, Larry. Well, I was nervous. It's, uh, it was tough to get involved. Uh, I was aware of you, of the audience. Whole time? No, no, it, uh, it went away uh, when, this was all, when the scene was almost over. Yeah. I was tense, nervous, bad, 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 bad. That's not funny. I'm sorry. Was everything a joke to you? Not everything. See, you're joking right now, right? Well, what do you want me to say? Joking is what's doing you in. Joking is the American actor's disease. It's the American person's disease. Because what you're doing is you're keeping reality out so that it won't touch you. The worst kind of joking you can do is to keep life out. Commenting, editorializing, joking, terrible, don't do it, it's fatal. I don't know, I guess I'm hiding from something. I'm afraid of something in the scene, so I joke it away. You're full of crap, Larry. Yeah. Marco, please. No, no, let him, let him talk. Look, I'm running this class, right? I know, but um, the man says I'm full of crap. I'd like to know why. Even now, right this second, you're playing the intellectual game. Can't you be real for one lousy goddamn second? Marco, shut up. I guess I do tend to intellectualize too much. Aha! That's it. Now, look, everybody. You know, embroider this on doilies, write it down in gold, that this is the most important thing you have been through in this class yet. It may be very important for the rest of your life. If you find out this one thing, you do not use your brain to keep the stuff out, you use your brain to take it in. But it's, uh, it's a tough scene to believe. I of mean... course it's tough. Any scene is tough to believe. That's why we're here, right? Odette's is tough. Any playwright is tough. Odette's particularly. He's writing real about real situations, but he's writing poetically. He's heightened the thing. So it sounds artificial to your own ear. But you see, it wouldn't if you were in it. It's only your objective ear that should not be operating while you're acting that makes it sound that way. When you're in it, those words will be the most natural things in the world to you. The point is, everything is tough simply because not everybody is Marlon Brando every week, you know? I would settle for Laurence Olivier. Yeah. <laughs> I'd nice. settle for Zazu Pitts. Ah! <laughs> Larry, how are we doing on my carrot and celery? Working. Hi, kiddo. All right, buddy. How are you? I thought you were working. Lunch. 
Do you want to eat here? I'm not hungry. Give me a large celery, carrot, and cucumber. Right. How are you? You okay? I don't think so. Why? What's the matter? Oh, look, Larry, take a break. I can't. What's the matter? I'm pregnant. Where's my celery, carrot, and cucumber? You sure? Larry, where's my carrot, celery, and cucumber? It's working. Did you see a doctor? Look, I don't want to talk here. Um, where's my juice? Uh, it's... Who's this? This is Sarah, my girlfriend. Beautiful skin. I'll be right back, sir. Where are you going? Five minutes, sir. What do you mean, five minutes? This is the lunch hour. My prime time, what are you doing? What are we going to do? I don't know about you, but I'm going to get an abortion. It's too dangerous, Sarah. How much money you have? I don't want you to go to some butcher. I have about $100. Money is not the problem. That man in the bar said he knew somebody. Who, Barney? Forget it. Would you have a better idea? Yes. We can get married. No. Why not? Larry, it's very sweet of you. I mean, it really is, but... I don't think we should get married. I mean, we both don't know what the hell we're doing anymore. Oh, shit, this is bad timing. Should have gotten a diaphragm a year ago. I didn't know you a year ago. Don't be silly. I thought you weren't sleeping with what's-his-name. You know his name. Ed, the painter. The big abstract expressionist from the post-war generation who was 20 years older than your father. Screw you! I did. Look what happened. You're not the first man I ever slept with. You said you weren't sleeping with Ed. I lied. Why? Because it's what you wanted to hear. Who else? What's the difference? We are talking about it, and I would like to know. You have wonderful timing. You're the first woman I ever got pregnant. Not the last. That's up to you. I mean it. Sarah, I'm willing to get married. I want an abortion. I really do, Larry. Okay. Wouldn't you want to be a doctor instead of an actor? You could have done the operation Sorry. yourself. Yeah. Should have listened to my mother. I'll have to see you later. Goodbye, Cookie. Thanks for coming. Can I see another's grief and not seek the kind relief? What a drag. Would you like anything? No, not for me, thanks. I would like a cappuccino and some of my cookies. I remember my first abortion. I was 17. Somebody sent me to a Haitian woman in Brooklyn, Brooklyn Heights. The first thing she asked me for was to see the money. When I ask see the money, I give you the answer. So I let her see the money. Then, as casually as you might ask the time of day, she told me to wait outside. Fifteen minutes later, it was over. How was the girl? In pain. What are you, some kind of sadist? I just want you to know what you're not getting yourself into. By the way, it's $400. You want to see the money? No. Is he a good doctor? I mean, is he legitimate? He's a she. A woman doctor? She's good. Did you have an affair with her? Of course. Did you get her pregnant? I mean, how apt, how perfect if she gave herself an abortion. We better go. Let me know what happens. I did not have an affair with her. You disappoint me, Bubbler. What's happening? I'm shopping for an abortion. Lucky girl. Look what I found. What are you going to call this one? 
destroyed. Maybe it'll help. I left home after my first affair. How old were you? Nine and a half. Who did you have the affair with? My sister. She was 19, ravishing beauty. She looked like Jean Tierney. Oh, I love Jean Tierney. She looks like uh, a Chinese empress. Seriously, my sister. What happened to her? She joined a Carmelite order, became a nun. She's a nun. She was. Two years ago, she left the nunnery. Where is she now? She's in Paris. She's a member of a bizarre sadomasochistic uh, sexual order. Whips, chains, hot candles, that sort of thing. Oh, sounds like a fun person. Hello, I'm Mrs. Stanton. Oh, Mrs. Stanton, if you'll have a seat, the doctor will be with you in about um, 15 minutes. Thank you very much. What do you read? I don't know. Mostly plays. Shaw, Shakespeare, O'Neill, Tolstoy, Faulkner. Read Joyce? Yeah. Elliot, Pound? No, haven't read Pound. You should. What do you think of Dylan Thomas? He's a great outfielder. He's a brilliant poet. I've, I've heard him read. I'll read the poets. It'll help you as an actor. How'd you get to be so smart? I left home when I was 15. The rest is genetic. Were you by misfit? <laughs> You're very funny. Was welst der von meiner Welt. It's amazing. Thank you. Goodbye. How are you? Hi. Thank you, Marsha. Call me, Robert. I will. Bye. Who's next? Mrs. Stanton? Uh, how are you? Okay, thanks. Right. What happened? She gave me a shot to make me bleed. If I bleed, she can do the abortion in the hospital. I have to do push-ups, sit-ups, jumping, anything. Then, if I start bleeding, we call the hospital and we pretend we're married. Gee, I don't think I can pretend to be your husband. Better learn how to act, kiddo. Hi, how is she? Oh, she's fine. Thank you, Miss Weasley. I'd like to thank you for what you did. Well, I'd love to deliver a baby for you and Sarah someday. Well, maybe we'll be calling you. Can I see her? Yeah, she's still groggy, but you can go in. OK, thanks. Uh, give my regards to Robert. I will. Thanks. Bye. How was it? The operation was a success. What time is it? It's about 4.30. I've got to call my mother. I just called Connie. She knows what to do. Mommy? Hi. No, I'm at Connie's place. No, I'm eating dinner here. I know, I should have called you. I'm sorry. Listen, I'm going to spend the night here, OK? She has a, a sleepaway bed. Yeah. 
No, just the two of us. No men. Mother, I'm going to spend the night at my friend Connie's. What is the big deal? Look, I'll come home right after work tomorrow. Fine. S say goodbye to d Daddy for me, will you? Sure, Connie knows what to do. She knows what to do. So how are you, kid? Strange. Grown up. Old. Oh, it's the anesthesia. Hey, Blanche, baby. I finally got you into the sink, huh, Blanche? Excuse me, Mr. Lipinski. I really think you ought to let your wife get a little rest now. I'll see you in the morning. Bye, Larry. He's oh. a sailor. Had to go to Marseille for a month. <laughs> oh, hi. hi, hi. Bye-bye. How are you doing? When are we going to rehearse our scene again? I'm sorry. I want to get back to it, but things have been crazy. Are you OK? Yeah, I just broke. Well, you should go to Fox. They're looking for juvenile delinquent types for a film. I'm in the theater, darling. You can do good work in films. Look at Brando. Look at Spencer Tracy. Let's play Subway. There's too many people. It's a subway. It's a subway. It's like crab hangers. Bam. Let's get this train. Let's go all aboard. What stop is this? Nothing. Next stop, Greenwich Village. I have an announcement. I have an announcement.
announcement. What? This train is stalled. No. We're stuck. We're stuck. We'll have to wait until they get us back on the rail. But don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Hi, I'm Pablo Picasso. Oh, hello, Pablo. I love your work. <laughs> calm down, calm down. Ladies and gentlemen, calm down. Yeah. All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're going to be in this subway a long, long time. No! I want you to try to conserve your energy. I want you to try to save this precious air. Let's play the truth game. What's the truth game? Well, whoever gets pointed at has to tell the truth. Right. You're it. Uh, 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 I see before me a man who, uh, uh, he's been painting the same canvas for the last three and a half years. Uh, I see a man, uh, uh, he seduces young virgins from Sarah Lawrence by pretending he's an artiste, when in, in reality he's a tap dancer. Uh, <laughs> Fuck you, Charlie. <laughs> I love black men, and that's a God's truth. <laughs> Would you like to know what I see? Only if it's the truth. I see the most gigantic ego in the history of mankind. <laughs> Marvelous. I see a man who thinks that everything in skirts is in love with him. Well, this is true. <laughs> I see charm, guile, poetry, and pain. Gee, I don't see any of that. <laughs> well, what do you see? I see... A wasteland of brainy, brainless, brimming brothels of bright, brilliant brimstones, branding brandy in a broken brouhaha of gefilte fish. I, I see the most beautiful girl in the whole wide world. Who I would like to put peanut butter on her frail body and eat it all up. And then I would like to have her caress me and love me and caress me some more. Larry! 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 We were in the neighborhood. Hi, Mom. Hi, Pop. Is this a party? No, dear. This is a subway. What? We, we were playing a game. Maybe we'd better oh, come another time. Nonsense, Dad. Come on, join the happy throng. Dollar a head. I pay, they pay. Come on, Mom, let's dance. Come on. Yes. Eat up. Eat up. Who are you? I'm Bernstein. You're Jewish? No, darling, I'm gay. <laughs> What are you doing here? This is my class. You can't do this. You think I'm your standard Jewish mother. I, I'm a funny lady who just shouts and shrieks and wails. Oh, am I not flesh? Am I not blood? Am I not a human being with feelings? Feelings like you and you and you, my son. You think I took you to all those double features so I could get out of the house? No, no. I want to be in show business, too. Why not? I can sing.
We used to go out dancing for fun. Speakeasies. Get ourselves nice and drunk. And we do the Charleston. In your whole life, you never once did the Charleston. I was two left feet. Why don't you leave all that? I'll clean it up in the morning. Um, we never played games. Subway. <laughs> Never heard of such a thing. Everybody's playing Subway. I can Mamie play it in the White House. <laughs> I liked Truman. Well, my feet are killing me. Ben, make me a nice hot cup of coffee, huh? I'll make it. No, no. <laughs> you all want to talk to you. Sit okay. down. Uh, sit down. Uh, oh, at least you're a Jewish girl, so... <laughs> Mrs. Lipinski, uh, Larry and I are not getting married. No, so then what are you doing? <laughs> You're not doing anything. Because, you know, something you think that I was born yesterday. Hey, none of our business, Frank. Mm -hmm. It bothers you I ask you a couple questions, huh? Not really. I'm glad we finally met. Yeah. It was up to my son would never meet. <laughs> he's ashamed of me. No, he's not. He's afraid of you. Miss, don't be such a wise guy. Here you are. You want something, Pop? I want to go home. I have to get up early. I just got my coffee. You want to go home? Lala, I understand you and this uh, pretty young lady. Your name's Sarah. Yeah. Sarah, they, you're not getting married, huh? Where'd you read that? Walter Winchell? Oh, another wise guy. Am I wrong or am I right? You're right. Sarah is just my girlfriend. All right, then, so when are you going to get married, huh? You don't necessarily get married to your girlfriends these days. Oh, so who do you marry, your boyfriends? I told you, Greenwich Village is peculiar. <laughs> I see where you get your sense of humor from. <laughs> I got married, I was 18 years old. 19. Uh, I, um... I never knew another man. Uh, <laughs> but in those days, you dated. And you got engaged and you got married. And there was no hanky-panky in between. Maybe there should have been. Hey, Sarah. I don't know. Maybe she's right. Who knows? But what I do know is nowadays, they date, they never get engaged, they never get married, and there's lots of hanky-panky. <laughs> so you two, you two are... Uh, <laughs> you know, you... Thank you, thank you. Mom, Sarah and I are just good friends. No, I'm not as old-fashioned as you think I am, son. <laughs> and what's the difference if I know the truth? You know, you think I'm a monster. It's none of your business. He's right. You can't stop, can you? I'm a grown man. I'm not a little boy anymore. I have an apartment. I have a career. I have a life. Some career. Four years you went to college. You squeezed carrot juice in a nut house. I have an actor. Right, look, don't yell at me. Hey, it's time to go. Look, miss, if you're sleeping with my son, it's true. It's your own business. But if you're all so damn modern about it, why shouldn't I know about it? Uh, what's the difference? We've had sex. Thanks. You had sex. You had sex. <laughs> I want to go. I got to go home. I want to go home! I didn't mean it. I want to go home. She was lying. Hey, Mom, she was kidding. I swear I was joking. Uh -huh. <laughs> she was only kidding, Mom. Kidding! I, I was only kidding. You were just kidding. I swear I was joking. We've never slept together. Uh, all right, um, uh, come on, Ben, let's go. Uh, it, it, it's very nice to meet you, Miss. You're, you're a beautiful girl. Uh, Mrs. Slipinski, it was nice meeting you, too. Uh, you, you know, you should have seen him in college, his acting. He, he's a genius. Uh, his Hamlet, it was like you saw a work of art. I'm ten years away from a good Hamlet. Ben, tell her. Tell her. She... She's really good. Larry's very talented. 
Uh, we could walk you to the subway. You were... um, I'm going to help clean up. Good night, Mom. You'll call me tomorrow, I'll, I'll 4 o'clock. Tomorrow, 4 o'clock. All right. Good night. Hi, Pop. Oh, my God. Great God in heaven, help me! Help a poor Jewish boy. Help my twisted brain. She is unbelievable. <laughs> what did I tell you? But she's smart, and she's kind of interesting. There's something strange about her. She invented the Oedipus complex. But I like her. She's kind of like a Jewish gypsy. The crazy thing is, while it's happening, I see the humor of it. No matter how insane it gets, there's still the funny side. You know what I mean? I'm tired. Larry. What's the matter? I expect her to walk in any minute. No hanky-panky. No, I can't have sex till Monday. Do you have cat's eyes? I also have elephant ears. I really want to go to Mexico. Oh, I don't know who's crazier, you or my mother. It's just post abortion blues. Is it going to be soon at all? What is your name? Clyde Baxter. Just have a seat. It D won't be did long. you look at the list? Am I on the right list? I, right. I am. Just have a seat. Yeah, you said that an hour ago. We're uh, running a little late. Would it help if you had this? Just have a seat. Just have a seat. Uh, Kenny Shackle. I believe I was before that man. Was I not? Was I before him or not? I, I don't have to do this, you know. You may not. <laughs> Boy, she's really something. Yes, she is something. I didn't study for six years to be treated like an, like an animal. You studied six years in New York? Yes, in New York. I studied with everybody. With Sandy, with Stella. I'm with Lee now. I don't... You're with Lee? At the actor's studio, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm studying with Herbert now. Herbert? I took a class with him. I paid $40 for a month, and the man talked for two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he talks a lot. I like him, though. Yeah. I was, I was thinking of uh, auditioning for the studio one of these days. Strasberg is a genius. He'll kill you. He'll nail you if your work isn't yeah. specific. Have you seen Brando work? He's working on Hamlet right now, but he hasn't shown it. He's a great actor. My name is Clyde Baxter. Larry Lipinski. You're going to keep your name? Sure, why not? It's too Jewish? No, it's just a difficult name. What about Edward G. Robinson? Morris Karnofsky? Cary Grant? My real name is Charlie Bolitnikov. Who's going to remember that? Larry Lipinski. Good luck. See you later, Charlie. Clyde. My name is Clyde. Clyde, sorry. Clyde. Okay. Good luck. I believe I was before him, was I not? I, they're not going to go before me, are they? Your name? My name? My name is Clyde Baxter. 
Just have a seat, please. Larry Lipinski. Uh, sit, sit down, sit down. <laughs> That's Wally Berry. <laughs> a little before your time. How old are you? I'm about 19. You're about 24 or 5. I'm 22. I like your face for this picture. Yeah, you look like a tough kid. Stand up, stand up. You got a real street look, huh? Now, where are you from? Brooklyn, Brownsville. Murder Incorporated, huh? <laughs> it was a tough neighborhood. I'm living in the village now. You're not a fagel, are you? No, but I'm Jewish. <laughs> Comedian, huh? I like that. <laughs> now, look, kid, uh, what's your name again? Lipinski, Larry Lipinski. But I'd be willing to change it to Frank Riley if that would help. Save the jokes for the screen test. Now, I want you to test for me in a studio here in New York. Now, if you get it, you're gonna have to fly out to the coast. Are you available? Are you kidding? No, 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 don't count on anything. There are about a hundred guys up for this thing. Uh, how does your mother feel about your acting career? Do you know my mother? No, but I remember mine. Now, when I started out, now, this was in the old days, Boatville, Keith Albee circuit. Well, kid, when my mother found out I wanted to be a tap dancer, she punched me in the chops with her purse. You were a tap dancer? <laughs> so I became a furniture salesman instead. <laughs> Come on, kid. What was your name again? Lipinski, Larry Lipinski. Good. Tell the girl to send another actor. Okay, thanks a lot, Mr. You'll be hearing, Cross. Cut her throat. Larry, call the police. It's my fault. Are you sure? It's my fault. I'm sure. It's my fault. It's my fault. Yeah, um, would you connect me with the police? There's an emergency, please. Yes, I'd like to report a suicide. No. You know where I first met her? Yes. She was married to a poet named Milstein. He was a house painter, so I hired him to paint my living room. I see. I didn't know Anita. <laughs> I didn't know Milstein. So yes. he comes over and I tell him to paint the living room off white. Okay, thank you. You know how tall Anita is? Thank Milstein was a head taller. It was like an eagle. They're coming. Yeah, so 
he started painting the room, and uh, I went into the bathroom to read. About an hour later, I come back to see maybe he wants coffee, something. I walk out, I see the room doesn't look as if it's been painted at all. And I see that he is dipping his brush into thin air right next to the can of paint. He is painting the wall with make-believe paint. So I, I uh, called his house and Anita answered. And she came over and she took him home. And that, my dears, is how I met Anita Cunningham. Uh, put us on a bell, please, and let's have quiet. And let's have real quiet this time. Number seven, Larry Lipinski. Take one, sound one. How old are you, Larry? I'm 16 years old, man. 16 going on 23. Where are you from, Larry? Brownsville, Murder Incorporated territory. Larry, have you any film experience? Yeah, I made two pictures last year. One like this and one like this. You're a funny guy, eh? I never made any movies, but I've been in a lot of plays, both on and off Broadway. And I'm in the studio, the actor's studio with Marlon Brando. That's so? Yeah, man. Studio's the greatest. What have you done on Broadway? I was in Mr. Roberts. I was in it for three months. What'd you play? Played a sailor. You know, like one of the kids. Like a tough kid sailor. Larry, would you slowly turn your head so we can see you full face and both profiles? With pleasure, man. Good. Can I see the right profile again? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, would you give us the right profile again? Yeah. Brunt, Larry. I have 10 seconds left on your test, Larry Lipinski. <clears throat> Anything more you want to say? Yeah, sure. Not only do I think I could do a great job in this picture, but I am also starving and I could really use the work. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> Okay, you're Thanks, very Sid. funny. Nice. <laughs> I think I was really nervous. No, 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 you're very good. Oh, set up for the next test, will you, Paul? Now, okay. uh, look, you'll hear from us in a couple of weeks as soon as it's on the coast. Huh? Okay, uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Wine. Uh, Paul, Kenny Shaffle. I said I wanted it quiet. It was awfully noisy in that last You know, it was very, very noisy. It's continuing, it doesn't stop, and it's getting boring. Now, Lou, Let me see. Yeah, I don't want to pick you out, but you're making noise off camera with the slate. Okay. If you want to chalk it, chalk it. When, when the I'm thing is right. over, it's, it's right. really boring. Right. Holler for lunch, and hey, don't you tell me who I holler for. I'll take care of the sleep. Please, please, please. Uh, you know? Uh, wait a minute! Wait, 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 wait a minute! Stop it! Stop it! We got three tests to go, fellas. Let's cut it out. It was very smart wearing the jacket. Hey, how you doing? Thanks. Thank you. You were funny. Yeah, but was I any good? But you shouldn't have lied about being in the studio. Hey, man, I really need the job, huh? I don't think that's very funny. I, I didn't mean... I'm sorry, Charlie. Clyde. My name is Clyde Baxter. Clyde. I'm sorry, Clyde. Good luck. Would you shut that door, please, kid? I, I mean, I hope he gets the job. I hope everybody gets the job. Could you please be a little quiet there? We're trying to make a shot now. On the, Yeah, we're being quiet. It's not we, it's you, sir. You are making noise and you're not being quiet. Oh, I don't like being singled out, if that's what, you, if that's what you're trying to do. Well, who do you want me to single out? Is this a quiz? What is your name, please? My name is Baxter. And are you here to audition for the part? Yes, I am here to audition for the part. I think you failed your, your audition. Uh, I failed my... Uh, uh, Get off the set! Feed it! Out! Yeah, fine. 
It's fine with me. Shut the door anyway. Yeah, yeah fine. All right, Sid. You ready? Okay. Action! Screen test. Larry Lapinski. Take one. Sound one. Action! We ride. Clear my head. We drive through the night. When you mow down the night with your headlights, nobody gets you. You're on top of the world, then. Nobody laughs. That's it. Speed. We're off the earth, unconnected. Nothing. Useless. No, we have each other. Two no, together. we have each other. Two together. Mom. We have each other. Somewhere, somewhere there are happy boys and girls who'll teach us their way of life. I love you, Mom. Oh, Joe, we'll find a city where poverty is no shame and music is no crime. Cut! Mm. Cut! Great back! Fantastic! Screen test. Larry Lipinski. Take two. Sound two. To be or not to be, that is the question. It is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows. Be a doctor! Of our brain, Walter. The schmuck face! And by posing in them. Larry Lupinski, you stink! Bernstein. He won't speak. He had a fight with a sailor. So he came over last night, we cried, then he got into bed, pulled the covers over his head, and bossed her. That's been it. Bernstein. Bernstein, I am talking to you. Oh, stop already, you Meshogana! Bernstein Chandler. Mm. Come on, Bernstein. If you don't respond in a couple of seconds, I'm going to have to phone the police, and they will take you to the hospital. Are you receiving me? Come on, I know you're scared, but so are we. All right, I'm going to count to ten, and then I'm going to phone the police. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine and a half, ten. I am now going to phone the cops. All right. Excuse me. Please, I don't want anyone to look at me. All right, baby, nobody's going to look at you. But can you tell me, please, why not? Because I don't want to look at anyone. Well, is there something we can do for you? I'm going to make a cup of coffee. Anyone want some? Would you like a cup of coffee? Would you like something to eat? Would you like a bedpan? Oh, bedpan always gets a laugh. You know why bedpan always gets a laugh? Because bodily functions are funny. Number one is funny. Number two is very funny. Belching is quite funny. <coughs> Farting is hysterically funny. <coughs> And various combinations are even funnier. A belch and a number two is hysterically funny, no matter how you cut it. Cut it. Cutting them is funny. It's a funny <laughs> phrase. I cut one. Can you imagine the King of England turning to the House of Lords and saying, Gentlemen, I just cut one. <laughs> Dump is a funny word. Screw is not funny. Sex is serious. Very serious. Sex is the most serious thing in the whole world. A guy who can't get it up is in worse trouble than a guy who died. You know why? Because a guy who died doesn't know he died. But seriously, folks, the funniest thing of all is this. My real name is Floyd Lewis. 
I was born in Macon, Georgia. My mother died when I was three years old. I don't know who my father is. My life is a fiction. All made up, my dears. No cleaning woman. No family named Bernstein. All fiction. Only the gay is real. My trade is real. My tricks are real. I've been brutalized physically and mentally. I really am out of my mind. So please, let me stay under the covers. I just want to stay under the covers. This town is hot and shitty and sweaty and grimy. I'm going to Mexico City next week. Are you serious? I'll buy my ticket tomorrow. Why? Why not? Well, I can't go. I'm waiting on that screen test. I'd like to go. We can't. Is there any rule against having fun? We can't afford it. We spent all our money on I'll a little... I'll lend you the point. money. What, did you just come into an inheritance? No. I just know some wealthy ladies who have a thing for poets. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind going somewhere. Then let's all go. Well, what about Bernstein? We'll wrap him up, take him with us. I can't go. Yes, you can. Hey, Sarah, I just told you I can't go. Well, I can. What does that mean? It means I can go. It means I'm not a prisoner. Do you think you're my prisoner? Sometimes. Then go fuck yourself and go to Tibet. I don't care what you do. Oh, uh, when do you find out about that screen test? I don't know. You have to know soon. In about a week or two. Well, why don't you wait until you find out and then join us? And what if I get the part? Then I'll come back. I'd like to talk to you. Sure. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. I would like another cup of coffee and another pack of cigarettes. No, make that a pot of coffee and a carton of cigarettes. They'll be okay. I don't know. Worry about yourself once in a while. I worry about myself all the time. Yeah? Tell me about it. There's nothing to tell. You're the funniest girl I ever met. So nice being called a girl. Would you like to come back to my place and make love for an hour or two? <laughs> I don't think I can walk up seven flights. That's easy on the way down. All right, let's go, Bogola, before you change your mind. I don't want you going to Mexico without me. Tough. I'm warning you, Sarah. I want to talk to you. No. Please. No. You hurt my arm. I'm sorry. Nobody owns me. Nobody. Do you have any gum? My mouth is tastes rotten. Here. Let's make love. Okay.
Do you have your diaphragm? Mm hmm. Put it on. I'm wearing it. Robert? Mm -hmm. I thought so. I'm sorry. You bitch! You bastard! You bitch! You couldn't stay away from him, could you? Huh? I love him. You're full of shit! You love yourself! How did it happen? What is the difference? What the fuck is it? Will you tell me how it happened? Will you tell me? anymore. I... I don't know why I did it. I didn't plan it. I... Uh, went to Robert's and we talked. And then we made love. I don't know anything else. Why did you come up here? I, I don't know. If I go to Mexico with you, is it over with Robert? I love you, Sarah. I know. I'll always love you. No, you won't. Always. Larry! Larry, John, you're home? We were, we were in the neighborhood, so we thought that we, we, we wouldn't get... We would... Oh, my God. Ray, I think we ought to go home. Look, you got to marry her. You hear me? You're going to marry her. We'll, we'll, we'll have a fast ceremony, honey. We'll, we'll, I don't know your mother and father. How could we? Nobody introduced us. But uh, I'm sure your father has got enough money for some kind of a decent wedding. Ray. Uh, Ray, let's go, huh? Put your pants on. Ray, can, you we, hear me? Can, we, can we go now, Faye? Why are you talking? Don't you see what's going on around here? It's none of our business, damn it! He's a grown man! Goodbye, Larry. What do you mean? So long, Sarah. What do you mean? What's the matter? What's happening here? It's crazy that... Larry, well, tell me. What? Baby, what's the matter? You know, I got, I, I, I almost forgot. I, I, I bought you the new um, uh, USC Burling record. It, it, it's an aria from uh, Bertie's Tosca. Ben, play the record for him. Oh. Oh, you should hear him sing. That man has a voice. It's the music. Da dee 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 da 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 da. La 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 la. I don't think that's Tosca.
What, what's going on? Tell me, honey. What? What is... Ben, make, make him talk to me. This, I don't understand such kind of people. I don't understand. Greenwich Village. Greenwich Village! Gonna hit me? I don't know. That's the funny thing about me. Never been hit by a man. You love Sarah? No. Was she good? What do you want? I like you, Larry. Come on, was she good? First times are usually rotten. I may hit you. I like Sarah. I don't love her. Have you ever been in love? I don't think so. I believe you. I did run away from home when I was 15. I knew I wanted to be a writer. I knew. I also knew I wanted to sleep with a lot of different women. What can I tell you? People get hurt. I'll tell you something, Robert. Underneath that pose, it's just more pose. Adios. How's Bernstein? He's coming. We'll meet them in Mexico City. You can say their names. Oh, I love you. I hope they get married and have twin poets. <laughs> A little angry fits you nicely. Coffee? What I don't understand is why you're going. I want to see the ruins. You're going to sit around and wait until he dumps her. You can say their names. I love you. I do. Really love you. Come on. I'll buy you a cappuccino. Is Bernstein really OK? He says he's going to find some beautiful Mexican trade and live happily ever after. That was a terrible thing with the Rosenbergs. I'm not a politician, but they didn't have to burn him in the electric chair. I went to the demonstration in Union Square. A waste of time. Demonstrations. If Eisenhower wouldn't stop it, what good is demonstrations? Grumman could have stopped it. They're all politicians. It's a waste of time. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Elkins. How do you feel today? My head feels good. My stomach feels good, too. Wonderful. But I didn't sleep 10 minutes last night. Now the tongue, please. Larry, make Mr. Elkins a cabbage or broccoli juice while I prepare a cup of rose hips tea. Who? Larry Lipinski. What yeah, is this right with here. the calls at yeah. work? I don't know if the man wants to talk to Hello? Him. What is yeah. this, a telephone Larry service? Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to run here. a business, yeah. and they get telephone calls. Yeah? Okay. Huh? That's okay. gratitude for you, huh? Thank you. Bring the boy in. <laughs> what is this? Nothing, Herb. I just got another job. At a delicatessen? 
No, in a movie. In a feature film. I got an acting job. I'm going to leave for the coast on Friday. Coast? Coast? What coast? Hollywood, Los Angeles, California. Wonderful. You're not pulling my leg? No, Herb, I got an acting job in a movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's terrific. That's fabulous. <laughs> Helen, did you hear that? No, because... My lady got a cool. job in a movie. Fun. What about my cabbage and broccoli juice? You juice. got it. One cabbage and broccoli juice going right out. How do you like that? <laughs> I got a Hollywood star making juice for me. <sighs> did I tell you this kid had something? Hey, Herb, we're running short on cabbage here. I want an autographed 8 by 10 glossy as soon as you get one. You hear, Larry? Okay. Put it right on the wall over the juicer. That was good. That was good, Mom. Well, I better be going. Where are you going? You just got here. I got a pack and everything. Be careful on the airplane. It's first class. How many engines does it have? Four, I think. Four? Four is safe. Four is safe. How do you know four is safe? I read it at the candy store. Larry. What happened with you and that girl? Her name is Sarah. Oh, Sarah. What happened? She ran off with a friend of mine to Mexico. They teach you to lie like that in Greenwich Village? You're a funny lady, Mom. My life has not been very funny. I'm going. Wait, you... So long, Pop. Bye, son. Mom, please, no crying. Promise me you won't get a big head. <laughs> and promise me you'll always remember where you come from. I promise, Mom. Remember your grandmother, how she got out of Poland. She had a snake across the border in a wagon covered with potatoes. And the guards, they, they stuck bayonets into the sacks. That's where you came from. Oh, I almost forgot it. <laughs> um... <laughs> for the plane. What am I gonna do with apple strudel on a plane? You'll eat it. That's what you'll do with it. I told you you'd get angry. I'm not angry. I'm crazy, but I'm not angry. So long. Sweetheart, Larry. Yeah, Mom? Listen, if you ever actually meet uh, Clark Gable, tell him that your mother loved him all of her life. And she saw every picture he ever did. I'll tell him, uh, Larry, uh, write. I will. Uh, uh, would you promise me write every day? I promise, Mom. And, and, and you'll call once in a while? You know, that's why we put a phone in. You... I'll write every day, and I'll call every other day. How's that? Larry? Be a good actor. friend of yours. Yeah, so was I. So, how is Greenwich Village treating you? Didn't you hear? I'm going to Hollywood. I'm going to act in a movie. Hollywood? So long, Mrs. Tupperman. Be careful, Larry. 